right, we're gonna take a look at 2.1, which is putting the pieces together. This is the beginning of chapter two in our Science Connect One textbook. So in the first little bit of this chapter, um, it has a demo that I would have done for you if we were in class, and it is turning pennies into gold. So if you are curious, um, you can take a look at this. Um, yeah. So elements um, cannot be broken down into other substances and contain only one kind of atom. So ad elements are made out of atoms um, and all of the atoms within an element are the same. Mendeleev organized the elements known by the 1800s and I think there were about 60 some of them in the 1800s. He organized them by atomic mass, so how much they weighed and started to notice some patterns. So from those patterns, he developed the periodic table. And in doing so, he realized that there were some elements missing or yet to be discovered. So from his organization of the elements in the periodic table, um, he could predict some of their atomic properties um, and actually left gaps for them, knowing that something was missing from his table and that it was just yet to be discovered. So the periodic table currently, as of 2020, right this moment, contains 118 elements. Lots of them are naturally occurring on Earth. However, some of the um, more recent elements that are added are ones that are made in the laboratory or man-made. So even as we add new elements, Mendeleev's predictions have been almost perfect. So the way that he organized his periodic table back in the 1800s was still applicable to what we're doing and seeing and finding in chemistry in 2020. Again, elements are made out of atoms, which are the smallest bits of matter. Matter being that it takes up space and has a mass. So we know that atoms are also made out of electrons and protons smaller pieces, but those are not considered necessarily matter because they are not. Um, electrons don't really have a big mass, nor do they take up a great amount of space. So when they compose themselves into atoms, um, those are the last divisible piece. Okay, this is the periodic table from your textbook, and it's on page 25 of your textbook, or you can find it at the very back. Um, it will, at the back, have a few extra pieces of information per um, element. What I wanted to highlight here were the groups and the periods. So a period describes the row across a periodic table. So for instance, period one up here describes this first row. Now the first row only contains hydrogen and if we keep scrolling across, helium. All right, so the first period contains two elements. The second period is lithium, beryllium, and we go all the way across and so we get boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Period four, for instance, goes straight across and we see all um, 18 of those elements. All right. Now, the groups are the columns. So within this group, we have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium all the way down. For instance, in group nine here, though, it's a much shorter group. We only have cobalt, rhenium, and iridium. Again, back at group 18, we have a full column there few pieces of information that we can also see from this periodic table is the classification of an element as a metal, a non-metal, or a metalloid. So non-metals in general are found to the right of what we call this staircase. So it's this bolded line down our periodic table. We also find one more non-metal and that is hydrogen sitting up over there by itself. Okay, so group one has one non-metal, but we can see that it also contains a list of metals. Metals in our periodic table are blue, 
Okay, and these will all have different properties. So a metal is different than a non-metal in the way that it behaves in chemistry, so within a reaction, but also the properties that it has just at room temperature. Last but not least, we see around, kind of surrounding this staircase, a little bit hard to see now that I've drawn on it, are these metalloids. <clears throat> metalloids are um, a little bit like a metal and a little bit like a non-metal. We'll talk about them next. So again, groups are columns and they, we usually talk about them going downwards. Elements in groups have similar physical and chemical properties. Periods are the rows across our periodic table. Metals are colored blue, non-metals were colored yellow, and metalloids were colored white. Now, within our periodic table, specifically the one at the back of your textbook where you can see a little bit more information about each element, we see the element's name is listed here. The element number, we can also call this the atomic number. We see the element symbol. So for hydrogen, it's just a capital H. And we can see its mass, also known as its atomic or sometimes its molar Here's mass. Sorry, Siri, it was trying to talk to me. All right, and last but not least in our periodic table, we can see the state of matter. So in this case, um, it's just written in a bit of a handwriting. We have a gas. We also can have liquids, which we typically write with a little bit of handwriting so that they don't look like a one or an I or anything else crazy. And we can also have a solid. So these are at room temperature under normal pressure, AKA if we had that element out on our table right now, it would be a gas, okay? So, Properties of metals. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. So, um, for instance, if you are roasting a hot dog over the fire and you're using a metal roasting stick, um, it could get warm um, at one end, even though the, uh, it wasn't the one in the fire. So it is conducting heat. Metals are also good conductors of electricity for the most part. So wires within our house are made out of metal, so it will carry the electricity to and fro. Metals can be bent, um, also known as being malleable. Um, so they can be twisted into structures. Um, we could hammer them into things. They can be stretched into wire, also known as ductile. Um, again, the wires in our house. And they can be polished until they are shiny. So some of our jewelry, for instance. All metals are solid at room temperature with the exception of mercury. So looking at your periodic table in the back of your textbook, let's find out mercury's state. You should be able to find mercury and see that it is a liquid at room temperature. Non-metals are the opposite of a metal, really. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity, meaning that if you heat one end of a non-metal, the other end is not going to get warm. They do not really conduct electricity very well, if at all. Um, so they would make poor wiring in our house. They are dull, not shiny, meaning you can't really polish them up. Most are a gas or are a brittle, which means a breakable solid at room temperature, okay? The exception is bromine. If you're looking for bromine on your periodic table, it is number 35, atomic number number 35. And bromine has a state of liquid as well. So bromine and mercury are the only two liquids on our entire periodic table. That's to say they are the only elements that are a liquid. There are many, many compounds in this world that are a liquid, but compounds are different than elements. We'll get to that though. So looking here, um, I have a picture of chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are all non-metals. Chlorine is a gas at room temperature. We just saw that bromine is a liquid at room temperature and iodine is a solid at room temperature. So we can see that they can all have different states. 
A metalloid is something, a cross between a metal and a non-metal, so it'll share the properties of both. You can see here, um, I have three examples. So silicone is a metal that can conduct electricity like a metal, but not as well as a metal. It is shiny, but it is brittle. Therefore, the brittle brings it to um, something like a non-metal. So that acts like a non-metal, and the fact that it'll conduct electricity, it acts like a metal. Antimony, SB, is a metalloid that is shiny like a metal, but brittle like a non-metal. Boron is also a metalloid that is somewhat shiny. It conducts electricity like a metal. However, it is brittle like a non-metal. So we can see that a lot of our not our sorry our metalloids are brittle, um, but share some of the properties of a metal. Here's some practice for you guys to take a look at and um, deepen your understanding of what we just learned.